Hi everyone, welcome to Bodyworks Prime. Today we're going to be going over the origin, the insertion and the action of the trapezius muscle. So here we can see the trapezius muscle in isolation. As you will notice, it connects to a lot of different places, uh, the scapula, the clavicle, uh, different vertebrae, the back of the head. So let's go over them next. So we can see marked out here in red the origin of the trapezius muscle. Let's look at the vertebral part of it first. So we've got C7 all the way down to T12 on the vertebrae. And you'll notice on the posterior or the back of each of these vertebrae, there's like a little nodule that kind of sticks out on the back of each one. And that's the spinous processes. So the trapezius is specifically originating on the spinous processes of C7 to T12 vertebrae. So you can see I've labelled here the neutral ligament, which just comes down here. That runs down the back of the spinous processes and connects onto the occipital protuberance of the skull. And this actually forms another origin point of the trapezius muscle as it moves up that back and neck. So you can see here a view of the posterior of the skull and you can see the external occipital protuberance here, which is where that neutral ligament's connecting to. Then either side of it, you've got the superior neutral line and that's where the trapezius muscle is also going to originate from. So in summary, the origin is coming from T12 all the way to C7, across the neutral ligament, occipital protuberance of the skull, and then either side of that occipital protuberance on the superior neutral line. Next, we can see I've marked out the insertion of the trapezius here in blue. And that insertion is going to run all the way from the spine of the scapula to the acromion and onto the lateral third of the clavicle. So we're back again with the scouter model. Let's take a look at the actions of the trapezius muscle. We'll start off at the neck, and if you imagine just one side of the trapezius muscle is contracting, it's going to cause flexion of the neck. So we've got lateral flexion of the neck as our first action. Next, if my head's tilted forward like this and the trapezius contracts, it's going to cause extension of the neck as our next action. So moving on to the scapula now, and if we imagine the upper portion of the fibres of the trapezius are contracting, it's going to lift the, the scapula upwards. So we've got elevation of the scapula as our next action. And as well as being able to elevate, it can also rotate. So if the upper fibres contract, it's going to rotate the scapula clockwise. Whereas if the lower fibres contract, it's going to tilt the scap rotate the scapula counterclockwise. Now, in addition to rotating, the lower fibres also assist in scapular depression. So that's when the scapula moves in a downwards direction. So, you know, if we got the scapula elevated like this, that would be depression of the scapula as it comes back down. Now, mainly that's going to kind of happen if you've got kind of a, a resistance trying to push the scapula upwards, then the lower fibers are going to be able to hold it in place and stop it from moving. Now, in addition to this, we've also got scapular adduction. So that'd be when the scapula moves medially. So an example with this, of this would be if my scapula is in a protracted position, then I retract the scapula like that. That's going to be scapular adduction as it moves towards the midline of the body. So if you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, you know which buttons to press. Press those buttons down there or leave a comment below. It really helps out the channel. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I'll see you all next time.